So a new report that on a call with federal prosecutors, Attorney General William Barr advocating for very aggressive action against protesters, in particular violent protesters. So he is encouraging prosecutors to consider charging them with sedition, which, as you know, is like a plot to overthrow the federal government. It's very aggressive action. It's, in fact, rarely used. Um, just another sign of the sort of like overwhelming force and aggressive tactics that this administration, Barr has been a central part of that, has been willing to take against protesters. Well, it's not protesters. These are people specifically charged with violence. We should be very clear. 200 people across the country who have been arrested for specific acts of destruction. And I mean, remember, the federal government can only act if they're threatening federal property. So all of the people here are charged with some sort of violent act, including like throwing Molotov cocktails, trying to burn things to the ground. I mean, look, it's deterrence. Like, if you're going to do something like this, yeah, I think you should be thrown in jail. And I think that there should be, like, aggressive tactics Charges used to go against thing. you. Sedition sure. is, like, next level. And Why? to me, this fits in with the whole approach of sending in the National Guard, threatening the Insurrection Act, um, you know, very sketchy situation with how the Antifa guy who ended up killing a Trump supporter was ultimately killed by police and trying to apprehend him. There are secret pro programs that are targeting protesters and collecting their data. I mean, it's just this very scary authoritarian crackdown and threatening to charge them with sedition is just one more example of well, that. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, charging people who are committing violent crimes with committing violent crimes and using everything that the federal government can a, possibly do. Is this do. the appropriate yes, charge? Yes, I, abso I absolutely think so. to overthrow the federal government? That's a lot. What do these people want? I mean, we've I watched those people try to pull down a statue here in Lafayette Park, right over here. It's very much akin to what they were doing. How about the people are going to charge them, too? He doesn't, seem so, he doesn't seem so concerned about them. And that's the thing is, like, if you're going to be, first of yeah. all, I think it's outrageous any way around. But if you're going to do it, you have to be even handed. And a lot of the violence has actually come from some of these white supremacists. And they're the ones that Trump goes, you know, I'm not saying Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist. We don't have proof of that. But guy shows up with a gun and ends up killing two protesters. He's lauded as a hero. And meanwhile, Bill Barr is celebrating and Trump is celebrating the extrajudicial killing of Michael Forrest Reinhold on the other hand. Well, we don't know if it was extrajudicial, number one. We don't, the circumstances around that are unclear. Kyle Rittenhouse Calling is a local... Retribution. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Kyle Rittenhouse, again, that's not a federal crime, so there's no reason that the federal government should be involved. These are specific acts against federal properties and, and places. That's actually a federal crime. So under their jurisdiction, particularly in places like Minneapolis, Portland, Wisconsin, where many of these people, and uh, San Francisco, where they literally just let people go free. Portland, I mean, Mr. Forrest Reinhold actually had been charged with gun crime, was released by the Portland prosecutors because they didn't want to appear political by going after them. So all of this actually could have been stopped. If you go well, and you see Kyle this. Kyle Rittenhouse's gun crime. Well, yeah, I mean, if he committed one and they let him out and he killed someone, don't you think that would be outrageous? Yeah. That's what happened with Michael Forrest Reinhold. So again, like, we need to be very specific and clear here. Whenever you break the law, and if you, and yeah, look, if the Boogaloo boys or whatever are doing this, charge the hell out of them. I am glad to see people like Timothy McVeigh or who is it, Dylan Roof. I want to see him get a needle in their arm. And I want to see anybody who pursues these types of disgusting tactics being put down by the federal government. I see a lot of selectivity whenever it comes to leftists who love the use of force against white supremacists, well, but then whenever it's their people, they're like, oh, no, We no, don't no, see the use do of that. force against white supremacists, well, we by do. the way. It's, call, I mean, it's what, what we're calling for, what anyone is calling for here is even treatment. And that's what we've seen. I mean, and look, can go back to the very begin beginning here, Lafayette Square Park, and we've got new reporting there too, where these were not violent protesters. These were peaceful protesters who had rubber bullets shot at them and some kind of gas. They say it wasn't tear gas, but everyone was crying and puking and all the rest in that park. And now we have a whistleblower coming out and saying that they actually stockpiled munitions and considered using a heat ray device that was considered too cruel to be used even in Iraq. Now this is, look, take the reporting with a grain of salt, if you will. This is a whistleblower who gave this testimony under oath. So if they're lying, this would actually be a crime. Um, it shows again just how 
outrageous they're willing to go with invoking, using the military, using the National Guard, cracking down on peaceful protesters and picking a side. That's the whole thing is like picking one side and saying when it's violence over here, then we're going to crack down. Then we're going to charge them with sedition act. Then we're going to shoot them with rubber bullets, even when they're not violent. When it's over here, then they're heroes and we're not going to say anything. Yes, about Lafayette it. Square dramatically undermined their commitment to rule of law. The commitment and the celebration of so-called retribution is also under dramatically undermining to the commitment of rule of law. But yeah. the commitment to the rule of law is not invalid. It is not an invalid concept to want to like protect the White House. And look, yeah, in that particular case, it was peaceful whenever they were out there during the day. At night, not so peaceful. Not when they're burning St. John's Church, not when they're burning and breaking things all around the White House in that area. I think they'd be fools not to consider the worst case possible scenario. Like we did on 9-11, there are SAM rockets, surface air missiles up on the top because of 9-11. So look, and, and you know, they have, just in case. These are the types of things that have to be pursued. So again, I'm not defending Trump. I think Trump has politicized this entire situation. Yeah. But the idea of rule of law itself is a sacred one. And that is something that is dramatically undermined by these people. Look, you got these New York City lawyers throwing Molotov cocktails at NYPD cops. You got there's a girl, a Kappa Delta sorority, who is fundraising for right now, charged with arson, who is setting things on fire. And they're look, if you're 22 year old, you need to know they, these pe the protesters or rioters do not rule the streets. But Sagar, here's the other thing is, first of all, we should be clear that in terms of the protests, the percent that have actually turned violent is like 5%. Oh, okay, that's a lot. five to seven percent. It's still a lot. Nobody wants violence yeah. in the not many well, these people, people want violence in the streets, right? What we're talking about is equal application of the law. And in fact, what the majority of the peaceful protests are fighting for is equal application of the law that bad police officers who kill people unlawfully should also be held accountable. Sure. I don't see that. I agree rule, with that. I don't see that rule of law coming from the federal government. And I don't see an equal application of the law when you're talking about sedition for, you know, leftists who who engage in property destruction or whatever they're doing. Well, it's not just property destruction. Of course, of course. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But I don't see an equal application of the law when you're talking about, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse is a hero and you're celebrating the killing of Michael Forrest. I don't know anyone who call this guy a hero, except some cranks online. Uh, I mean, well, like, I actually Trump, don't know anybody. Trump praised him. I mean, Well, he, he said this young man seemed to be in a tough situation. Exactly. That's so not like that, praise. So again, is that yeah. equal application of the law? You see the effort to label and Antifa as a domestic terrorist organization. Do you see that for white supremacist organizations who have been behind much more actual violence in terms of people getting killed well, in this country I actually don't than think leftists? Or, it is 100% true. I don't it think is that's 100% true. In true. Look at the data. Especially since Black Lives Matter protests. But even if so, I'm one. And I think when El Paso, I called here for F the FBI to declare them white terrorist organizations, to infiltrate them, destroy them the way that we did Al Qaeda. So I actually think there's a large segment of people that do agree with that. And that's but I'm really not talking what about they you. Sure, I'm talking I about agree. Bill Barr and Donald Trump right okay, now. Okay, but Bill Barr and them are making sure that these people pay costs. And they has to be a cost. If you do not get to throw Molotov cocktails at police officers, you need to go to jail Sedition for a long and time. and tracking and surveilling protesters and invoking the Insurrection Act and bringing in the military and having that kind of a police state is a frightening development and is plays but and again what you want for white supremacy again no yeah. actually well, it's I, not calling yeah. in the military it's it's not but yeah. if you're going to do these things at least you have to do them on both sides and that's the part where that is not law and order that is a breakdown of law and order that is an unequal application of the law and of course you know that law enforcement often gets off when they commit these crimes as well is another piece of this yeah oh well, it's a tough situation indeed right. it is all right well more rising for you after this